I said, good morning, church. Are you all awake? It's 11 o'clock. You guys can stand. Let's worship together. Thanks for those of us joining online. your week was like and what this next week will be like but it has to bow every problem every trouble let's sing this together oh 
God Almighty. In our lives, in our households, you reign, God. You know, David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Anybody excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? You know, I believe that there's an attack upon the land discouraging people to go into the house of the Lord because there are miracles in the house of the Lord. This is the house of Bethel. This is the place where we're fed. This is the place of the ascending and the descending of angels. This is the place where we're healed. That's why David said, better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. It's so good to be in the house, so much that I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. So I'm going to shout one more time. I'm going to shout one, two, three, an impact. I want us to celebrate the privilege of being in the house of the Lord, the privilege of being in a place where there are miracles, blessings, signs, and wonders. And you two at home, you can celebrate. Here we go. One, two, three. Somebody celebrate the goodness of God. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. You're worthy. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. And right here, right now, we're going to pray our impact one prayer together. Like we always do, I want you to think about someone who desperately needs salvation. Here we go. Lift up the music. Here we go. One, two, three, go. God, please give me one person to impact with your love and invite the church. One more time. God, please give me one person to impact with your love and invite to church. Well, impact, let's celebrate like they are already saved. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, man. Well, it's all about connecting. We come to church to fellowship. We come to church to be encouraged and to see other saints worshiping together, our Lord and Savior. Amen. So let's connect. Let's meet somebody new. Let's say hello to an old friend. And we're going to put 60 seconds up on the clock so you can do that. today. Turn to your neighbor and say, you look good. Y'all look good. good. Hello, 11 o'clock service. We are so glad that you are here worshiping with us today. Happy Sunday. Hey, if you're new or this is your first time visiting us this Sunday, would you give me a nice little wave? I want to say, hey, 
Any new people in the house? I saw one hand. Hello, hello. Oh, that's not a hand. I know you. I, she just snapping. Hello. Hey, we're so, or if you're new visiting us online, give us a wave in the chat. We're so glad that you're here worshiping with us today. If you are new or if you're visiting us uh, for the first time or second time or whenever, we want you to get connected. How many of y'all know, just like Pastor Michelle said, we don't want you just to come to church just to sit. We want to help get you plugged in to serving, to community, to being part of the body of Christ, an active member of the body. So we want to connect with you and share all the ways that you can do that. So there's two ways that you can do that for me. You can take this beautiful connect card that I have in my hand and fill it out and let us know that you are here. Or grab your handy dandy cell phone click that beautiful QR code on the screen, fill it out, and what that will do, you'll get information about all the events, all the things that are coming through the pipeline. We'll get you connected with all the news, all the ways for you yourself, how you can get plugged in to life here at Impact Church, amen? Amen. One of the big things that we have for you, especially if you're new to our church, or you've only been coming a little bit, or if you're not plugged in in any way, the best thing that you can do is come to our Connect Breakfast. Somebody say Connect Breakfast. Come on, we have Connect Breakfast the first Saturday of every single month, which means this coming Saturday, November 5th, we have a Connect Breakfast. That's right. So we want you to be there. Uh, if you haven't attended a Connect Breakfast yet, even if you're not new, you need to come. Uh, it's not just for brand new people. It's just a way for our whole church to connect with one another, hear from our pastors, hear from leaders of our church. And before you leave that day, we are gonna give you an opportunity to sign up and get plugged in somewhere and be a part of this community, amen? So if you haven't attended one, what I want you to do right now, I want you to take out that phone, if you didn't already. I want you to click that beautiful QR code up on that screen. And I want you to sign up. Hey, there's free breakfast that's gonna be accompanied with this whole event. I love breakfast. I love free breakfast. Anybody else out there free, free? Free 99, grab some friends. Uh, come through this Saturday. More information, we're gonna send you all the details, but register right now to come to Connect Breakfast this Saturday. Amen? Amen. Another great way to get plugged into church and get take your first step into saying, I'm gonna get off the bench, pull me in coach, I'm ready to play, take our next steps class that happens every, the first four Sundays of every month. Today's a fifth Sunday. So y'all are in luck because next Sunday starts a brand new series of it. We start at 101, we go to 401. We meet at the 11 o'clock service. You'll hear the vision, the mission, just the heart of this church. Uh, you'll learn about yourself. Who doesn't love learning about themselves? Um, and all the ways that you can, um, the different teams that you can serve under. It's a great class for your introduction to learn more about Impact Church. So next week, 11 o'clock, come to the 9.30 service or the 12.30, but during this time, you're gonna come and you're gonna go to our next steps and take the class, amen? How many of y'all have taken next steps in this house? Yes, see all these people, the lower level, okay, upper level. All y'all, next week, we'll see you there. Okay, they're like, hey, hey, I took it. Hey, awesome. We hope to see you there. It, it'll jumpstart you to getting into community here at Impact Church. And that's what we want for you. Amen? Amen. Hey, today is the last Sunday of Pastor Appreciation Month. Yes, we can do better than that. I need that same energy from everybody now, all right? It's Pastor Appreciation Month, y'all. Amen. That's right. Listen, pastors have such a job. Amen. They have, what, what a job they have. Um, and we want to honor our pastors of this house. Pastor Zenzo, Pastor Michelle, Pastor Femi, and his wife Shio. We love them. We are so lucky, y'all. I don't think you will understand. We are so lucky to have the pastors that we have. So send them an email. Send them some love. Let them know that you appreciate them. And we want them to feel all the love this month. Um, even these last two days of October. Uh, let them feel that love. Amen? 
Amen. You can also show them some love if you'd like to give them a gift on our DECA through our giving account. Uh, there is a drop down where you can give them uh, both of our families pastor appreciation a gift. Just let us know that it's for them and we'd love to, to bless them in this month. Amen. Amen. Hey, we are going to worship God through our tithes and offering. That's right. Amen. Front rows, God. We're going to do that again. I'm going to give you another chance to, to worship God. Okay. We're going to worship God through our tithes and offering this morning. Amen. Hey, as the buckets go around, we have some incredible testimonies from our freedom class that's been going on. Turn your attention to the screen. Check it out. Hi, my name is Anoska, and I just finished the Freedom class. It was just a breath of fresh air to take the class. It's really empowered me to see myself the way God sees me and, you know, kind of learning how to attach those negative thoughts that I have with positive ones that, you know, he quotes in scripture. I can already see God working in me, and it's, I'm just excited for, you know, um, God continuing to work in me and, you know, myself being a transformed person. I really recommend taking the class. Um, it's really changed my life. I can't wait for what God has in store for me.
praise him. He's worthy. He's worthy. We worship you. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are so. Sing it in the house. You are. And you And you are so Go one more time with our hands lifted up. You are. You are so worthy. You are so Thank you, Jesus, for your presence in this room. Would you take a moment and just praise him? We thank you for your presence in this room. Your manifest presence. Heal, touch, bless. Do a work that no man can do in Jesus' name. And we all say together, amen and amen. Impact, can we explode with a shout and a praise one more time in this place? Oh, come on, somebody shout like you just won the Super Bowl in this place. Amen. Big Pat, would you give somebody a high five on your way to your seat? And just tell them, so good to see you in church. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, Impact, this is Hachi, and it's his first time playing on the bass. <laughs> it's his first time playing on that bass, and we just celebrate people in this house. By the way, on Friday, I did something I don't always do. I pretty much changed 50% of their set, and they said to me, we got a new musician. I said, well, he's right on, and this is the best time for him to learn the ways of Impact Church because we just follow the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. And uh, so he, he learned some new songs yesterday and he did a great job. Hey, Impact, we have a brand new Instagram page uh, because we got hacked and somebody destroyed our page completely. You know, you know what that means? It means we're doing something right. <laughs> so make sure you follow that page. We have Hunger Night. On November the 20th, we're going to fill this room with worship and prayer. I saw a vision of people flying into Boston, and they were saying, what's going on? And they were not coming here. 
to Fenway, they were not coming to Gillette Stadium. They said, we're coming into the city to taste what the Lord is doing. Yes. The presence of Jesus. We see signs and wonders and miracles in those hunger nights. Make sure you're there. Bring someone who's in desperate need of a miracle. Somebody say amen. Hey, my wife and I are fresh out of Italy, Rome. Buongiorno. Amen. We had some bruschetta and we had some pasta. Mamma mia. It was so good. Amen. We believe in healthy marriages in this house. Somebody say amen. Show me how you lead your family. That's really how you're going to lead ministry. Amen. If you want to know the type of believer you are, uh, don't ask people in church. Ask people in your family. And if you can do it well in family, you're going to do it well elsewhere. Somebody say amen. You cannot bypass family. Don't ever let ministry outpace family. Somebody say amen. amen. So we were in Rome, Italy, and we had a beautiful time. Boy, you, I don't know how they fast there. I asked the pastor. I said, do you guys ever fast here? Because it's eight course meals. They bring you white pasta, and then they bring red pasta. And then after that, they bring steak and lamb and all types of meat and potatoes. I'm like, somebody should have warned me. I should have started eating right here, right now. And then they bring salad and other things, and then they bring the, the, the desserts and all that stuff. And it was an incredible time with my girlfriend of 18, sorry, 16 years. We're getting there. It was an incredible time. Now, the only challenge about coming back home is that when we're out there, it's just me and her. It's like back in the days. <laughs> Donut, when we get back, those four kids, they come and they're all over her. And I, I, feel, I feel a spirit of rejection. <laughs> I'm just over here looking at the kids and they're just all over her. Especially that last one, Naya. Leave my wife alone. <laughs> now, on Friday, day after when we came back, my wife was all done up and looking good. And I'm like, this is awesome. She wants us to... Just continue this honeymoon. She's planning a date. She's coming out of the house. All of a sudden, I see another dude coming out of the house. It's a 14-year-old boy with a basketball. Hey, Daddy, I'm going on a date with Mommy. I said, the devil is a liar. <laughs> and she's like, I'm going on a date with Zenzo. And I was just parked in the parking lot thinking, man, what just happened? <laughs> And they went off on a date. <laughs> Two, three hours, they're out there. <laughs> and then the kids came out of school and then they went out and I said, Lord, let me just pray. <laughs> well, Impact, we had an incredible preacher of the gospel last Sunday. <laughs> Amen. How many people were blessed by Pastor Manny? Uh, you know, Pastor Manny is from Boston. We were actually raised under the same spiritual father, ordained under the same spiritual father. But he has never been invited back to Boston to preach. Yet he's traveling the world. And the Lord said to me, we need to honor this man of God. And honor him and give him a platform in Boston. And break the curse that's in Boston that we honor and celebrate our own. So one more time, can we celebrate Pastor Manny? Love you, sir. Now, the interesting thing today is that I'm supposed to preach a standalone message because we're starting a brand new series next week, Sunday. But the text that the Lord gave me is the same text that Pastor Manny preached from. And so the Lord is up to something. Uh, and you guys get a, a two-part series here. Uh, two-part message in this series that wasn't planned. Jesus tells the disciples, let's go over to the other side, and a storm breaks out. Not a coincidence. I want you to know that the enemy hates destiny. He is the killer of destinies. And right now, families are going through a lot of things, marriages are going through a lot of things, and I want you to know that it's a demonic conspiracy against destinies. 
The other side represents destiny. The other side represents upgrade. The other side represents the prophetic plan and the fulfillment of the prophetic plan for your family. And as soon as you take the journey, as soon as you decide we're going over to the other side, a storm comes. It's not a coincidence. It's a demonic conspiracy. Now, I want to read this, verse 39. When Jesus woke up, because Jesus was sleeping when the storm came. When Jesus woke up, watch this, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, silence be still. Suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. Something happens when you rebuke something. Peace is a, is a product of rebuking something. Let me not get ahead of myself. Verse 40, then he asked them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked each other, who is this man? This is the main part of the text. Don't miss this. It says, even the wind and the waves obey him. Even the wind and the waves obey him. Even the demons obey him. I just came to remind someone in this place. This is the main part of the story. That your Jesus, my Jesus, the winds and the storms still obey him. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. They still obey him. The winds and the storms still obey him. Years ago, we were living in Medford here. We had a, a two-bedroom apartment. Uh, we lived a radical life. We sold finances. God gave us to start this thing called United Night of Worship. Did it again and did it again. So we're living in this two-bedroom apartment. At the time, we had two kids. Our Zenzo was two, and our Naya was a newborn. Rather, our Sarah was a newborn. <laughs> and she was such a loud, crying, screaming baby that we had to take her out of the bedroom with her brother and bring her to our bedroom, and she was screaming and crying so much, she practically kicked us out of our own bedroom. Her mom and I, we took a mattress, put it in the living room, and slept in the living room while she took over our bedroom. And the other baby was in the other bedroom. This was a very difficult season. And in the nighttime, I kid you not, brace yourself, I heard the sound of something. It was a sound of rats in the house. And I'll never forget this. While we're sleeping on the mattress in the living room, I felt something climb. Somebody say, brace yourself. Now, I kid you not, I told you to brace yourself. Now, I'm ashamed to tell you, but I jumped out of that mattress before my wife jumped out of that mattress. I was out, and she was screaming, and she's standing on, the, on one of the couches. And I called the landlord, and I told him, we have a problem here. And he said, Zenzo, uh, there's nothing you can do about that. There's a crack in that foundation. You're just going to have to live with that. So the next day, <laughs> I decided to fast and pray for the rats. <laughs> and I was so upset because I was not eating while those rats were eating my food. <laughs> so I was motivated to pray even more. And I kid you not, when we did that, that same night, we prayed, fasted and prayed, put the traps in. You got to do both. For the first time, those traps were there, but for the first time, those traps killed eight mice. Five in the kitchen, three in the bedroom. Somebody say amen. amen. You were laughing at me fasting and praying over rats. It worked. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now... You would think, why would you fast and pray over rats? You see, we're living in a generation of a people who are preoccupied and exhausted, putting traps everywhere. They've forgotten to rebuke the spirit behind the mice. When that storm came, Jesus woke up and he rebuked something. Now, it's interesting because Jesus was sleeping when the storm came. Now, this was not a setup for destruction for the disciples. 
The reason Jesus was sleeping is because when you go back to Genesis chapter 2, God already gave authority to man over everything in the earth. So Jesus was sleeping because this was the opportunity for the disciples to exercise authority. A few years ago, somebody came to this house, to this church, right after service, and he had plans to attack the pastor. And he did it on cue. But how many people know nobody can attack us because we're protected by God? But it's interesting how the demonic works. As soon as I was walking out after our three services, he was driving in. And me being a pastor, I was running to him because I hadn't seen him in a long time. Hey, how are you doing? And all of a sudden, I saw a strange look on his wife's face sitting in the passenger side. Strange look on him. And he started to reach for something in the glove compartment. Dave, can you wave, Dave? My spiritual son, Dave, was there. He pushed me back like that and stood. And let's just say that's what happened. We won't say something else. But afterwards, that man started leaving. He drove off. Cussing and saying all kinds of things. Uh, and then <laughs> my spiritual son, Joel, what are you? Wave, wave, wave. When Joel found out that this had happened, by the way, Joel never misses church. But when he found out that this was the only day that he missed church and that something happened, Joel was so upset. When I first talked to Joel, he was literally pacing. It's just, <laughs> just <laughs> pacing. Now, if you know Joel, he's a military man. Now, you would think Joel was upset because his pastor was attacked. No, Joel was upset because he wasn't there when the action was happening. <laughs> Joel was more upset about not being there <laughs> when the action was happening. He missed an opportunity. He was more upset because he missed an opportunity to show some authority and to kick some behind. I came to tell someone in this place, the reason Jesus is sleeping is because he's entrusting you with the opportunity to kick some behind. Can I see a church of people that still knows how to rebuke the devil? Does anybody still know how to kick some devil back? Does anybody still know how to pray? Does anybody still know how to draw a circle and tell devil, I'm going to drag you into my prayer circle. You're not going to drag me outside with everything that's happening. Devil, I'm pulling you into my circle and we're going to fight and have victory. You will not have my marriage. You will not have my children. Stop crying about the storm and rebuke the storm in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on. Somebody shout hallelujah. Joel was upset because he missed an opportunity to take charge. And what I'm seeing is that families are going through so much, but there's a lot of crying and complaining and analyzation, a lot of therapy and consultants, a lot of self-help methods, and nothing wrong with that. But how many people know we've got to rebuke something? We've got to bind the devil. Now, you don't hear this type of teaching anymore in America. But I'm here to tell you that the story in this text is about a storm that was demonic and a Jesus who's obeyed by the storms and the winds. And we have forgotten to pray. So here's my first point. Don't miss the opportunity in this season to exercise the authority that was given to you. Subdue the earth. Take dominion. Don't miss this opportunity that God has given us to exercise authority. Here's my second point. Prioritize spiritual warfare over self-help methods. Mark chapter 4 verse 39, watch this. Jesus rebuked the wind and then he said to the sea, in other words, Jesus rebuked the wind and spoke and addressed the waves, the water. Watch this. Jesus rebuked the invisible and then he addressed the visible. Huh. Stop counseling the invisible. You cannot counsel a demon. He 
rebuked the invisible and then he addressed the visible and the tangible. We're living in a generation where we have this amazing self-help stuff. But in a way, they have crippled us. Nothing wrong with therapy. Matter of fact, I believe many believers need to consider therapy. But please, rebuke something first. Jesus rebuked. Watch this. As soon as they woke him up, he rebuked the wind. And then he addressed the visible. So right now we take dominion authority over every spirit of the enemy against your family, against your marriage, against your career, against the destiny of your family in the name of Jesus. We take dominion authority in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. Number three, refuse to give the enemy permission. I want to take time here and teach you something. And by the way, we're not teaching like this anymore anymore. In the house of God. Because you can do all that self-help stuff. And we need to do them. But it's like chasing your own tail. And people are tired. Setting up all these kind of traps. Doing all these kind of things. You can do all that. But there's a spirit. Behind what's happening in your home. In your marriage. So watch this. Jesus told them we're going over to the other side. How many people know when Jesus says we're going over to the other side, it's a done deal? (laughs) Can I teach you something? Let me teach you spiritual warfare. It's so simple. Spiritual warfare is coming in agreement with the promises of God. I know people who bind and loose and bind and loose and nothing is bound and loose. Because spiritual warfare... Is agreeing with the promises of God. And when we bind and loose, we're binding and loosing according to the will of God. You cannot outpray the will of God. And so Jesus said, We're going over to the other side. Watch this. The storm came and the storm was demonic. How do I know the storm was demonic? Because Jesus rebuked it. Can I just say this? If Jesus rebuked something, we have to rebuke something. Let me say this, if in the last three months or four months you haven't rebuked anything, we're not doing it like Jesus did it. And it's so simple, it's not spooky. Just tell the devil, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen, in the name of Jesus. Why in the name of Jesus? Because the storms and the winds still obey him. In the name of Jesus. But here was the mistake. The disciples... Saw the storm, it was demonic, and they started agreeing with the plan and the scheme of the enemy. They started saying, we are going to die. I want to give you four powerful statements. Please write this down. Fear is faith in the demonic. Because fear says that I believe that the devil's plan over my life is going to succeed over God's plan. Fear is faith in the demonic. Number two, fear is agreement with the demonic. Fear is agreement with the demonic. Number three, fear gives permission to the demonic. Fear gives permission to the demonic. Number four, fear gives influence to the demonic. Job Job said this, Job said this, the thing I feared the most has come upon me. Why? Because when he feared, he opened the doors to the demonic activity and influence. Why? Because fear is faith in the enemy. And fear is agreement with the enemy. And fear is permission, giving permission to the enemy. And fear allows the enemy to have influence over you. And we don't teach this anymore, but many times believers say this, a Christian cannot be possessed by a demon. Now, what I want you to know is that where the Holy Spirit dwells, an enemy, the demon cannot dwell there. But what you have to understand is this, the word possess simply means to be demonized. And to be demonized simply means to be under the influence and the authority 
of. So it's possible for Christians to be under the influence of the demonic. And we see it happening in this text. The disciples are there. Jesus is right there. And they're under the influence. Wow. Why? Because they actually gave permission to the enemy when they came in agreement with the enemy's plans. Instead of believing the truth, we are going over to the other side. So I want you to watch this. Habakkuk 1 verse 6. It says, for indeed, I'm raising up the Chaldeans. Watch this. A bitter and hasty nation. Which marches through, watch this, which marches through the breadth of the earth. Sounds familiar? Watch this. To possess dwelling places that are not theirs. When you do an exhaustive study, the Chaldeans are synonymous to demons. They were wanderers and they destroyed everything they found. Watch this. They march through the breadth of the earth. That's what demons do. And they possess places that are not theirs. In other words, they demonize and they influence. They create a government in places and they influence those places. So, when I was young, I grew up in this compound. My father was a professor. So, I grew up in this compound with international families. I had neighbors from Switzerland and Chicago and all this you know, God was preparing me to pastor a church that looks like this from the time I was born. <laughs> Isn't God good? Yeah, somebody said to me, how are you comfortable with all those nationalities? I grew up in a compound like that. But what happened in the beginning was that all the international people, all the kids did not want to play with me because they say, you're Malawian, you're different from us. And then I would go to school, Mike, and try to play with the Malawians. And they would say, you hang out with the internationals. You're a white boy. <laughs> so I was rejected with the internationals. And I was rejected with my own people. And I'll never forget one day saying this to myself. Nobody likes me. Nobody likes me. Nobody accepts me. And then years later, I started struggling with the spirit of rejection. And God opened my eyes. He said, that day when you say nobody likes you, you came in agreement and you gave the demonic permission and influence over this part of your life, even though Jesus is there. I would go lead worship. God would move and people would be healed. And I would walk out of there thinking nobody liked my worship. When I went back to Malawi just before we planted this church, I had a conversation with my father. We were walking there at the church building. And dad said to me, Zenzo, I feel like I've done well as a prophet to the nations. I have prophesied to presidents, my TV ministry, and all this has happened well. God has done a great job with me there. But I feel like I have failed when it comes to pastoring the church. And he says, Zenzo, I feel like sometimes God called me to being a prophet and an evangelist, not so much a pastor. And then he said this. He said this. And to be honest with you, son, I don't know if the Matogas were called by God to pastor growing churches and thriving churches. And at the time, I was a traveling evangelist and prophet. And when my father said this, it was a root of fear that came in. And I came in agreement with that word. And I said to myself, my togas don't pass the thriving churches. And I came back here gripped in fear, almost ready to cancel this whole plan, fantasizing about flying and going around the world. And right there I realized that I was under the influence. And I began to fast and pray and break that thing. You know what? The enemy saw you impact church. The enemy saw this church and he wanted to terminate it before it even came off the ground. And I want to speak to someone in this place that's experiencing a demonic attack. It simply means your miracle and your blessing is around the corner. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Your miracle and your blessing are around the corner. When you get attacked, you have to know. 
pay attention to the areas that the enemy is attacking you in. It's because there's a calling there. As we end, here's how you know that you're under demonic influence. Number one, there's chronic fear. Chronic fear. According to Mark chapter 5 verse 5, when Jesus went over to the other side, there we go again. A demon called a legion came. 2,000 demons in him. And the Bible says he lived among the tombs and he was crying constantly. Spirit of fear. Panic attacks. Let me tell you this. All forms of anxiety and depression and panic attacks and phobia. Let me tell you this. That's a demonic influence. Somebody's going to get set free today in Jesus' name. Somebody opened the door. You know what's interesting to me? People who struggle with anxiety, they always say this. My anxiety came back. It's not your anxiety. Quit saying my anxiety. That thing belongs to the devil. You keep saying my anxiety. You're coming into agreement with something that does not belong to you. It belongs to the enemy. We are sending this thing back to the sender in the name of Jesus. We're going to renounce that thing today in Jesus' name. Number two, unusual and strange happenings. This legion, this demoniac was naked and dwelt in the tomb. Some of you have experienced unusual things in your family. Sudden happenings, things that don't make sense. Just coming from everywhere and hitting you from everywhere. Number three, isolation, bitterness, and rebellion. Let me tell you this. There's nothing that will open you up to the, to the demonic work than unforgiveness. Let me say this. Forgive everybody. <laughs> Somebody say amen. I'm fresh out of Italy. Let me speak with my hands. Forgive everybody. For, just forgive everybody. Forgive that kid who kicked you out of the playground when you were eight. Forgive that boyfriend who dumped you as a teenager. Come on, forgive that professor. Just forgive everybody. Because the Chaldeans find comfort in places of bitterness. The Chaldeans... Find comfort in places of bitterness. Number four, reoccurring cycles of defeat. This thing just happens over and over and over. Number five, sickness and death and disease. And I came to declare over someone in this place, it's time for you to rebuke the storm and take back what belongs to your family in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen and amen. Come on, we're taking back what belongs to us in Jesus' name. Come on, the winds and the storms, they still obey Jesus. Would you stand if you can? If you're in this room right now, and you know there's an area, there's an area you've opened up, an area, and you've come in agreement. You've given permission to the enemy. Anxiety, depression, strange happenings, breakthroughs that just they're just not happening in your business, in your business, and things that are reoccurring over and over and over. Strange sicknesses, premature death. There's a phobia, chaos in your family, in your marriage, your children. We're not teaching this way anymore. We're going to run to the altar of Jesus back in this nation. We're taking dominion authority. Come on, we're breaking curses. Do not miss this opportunity to take authority over the works of the evil one in Jesus' name. I'm going to shout one, two, three. We're going to all shout one more time. And I want you to run to the front. If you know there's something, there's something. You can even come right now. There's something upon my life. And I'm taking dominion, authority over it in Jesus. And there's no shame in the house of God. I, this is my day. I'm not missing this opportunity in the name of Jesus. Come on, run to the altar. Run to the altar. One, two, three. Somebody shout. Run to your altar. Run to the altar. Don't miss this opportunity in the name of Jesus. There's a, there's a stronghold that's been in my family. It was upon my father, it was upon my mother, it was upon me. Come on, keep clapping as they come. Keep clapping as they come. Come on, keep clapping as they come. There's something about a clap. There's something about a clap. There's something about a clap. There's something, something about a clap. 
Oh, hallelujah. Come on, keep clapping as they're coming to the altar. Keep clapping as they're coming. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Come on, keep clapping. There's something about our clap. There's something about our clap. Jesus, Jesus. the prayer team to come. We're going to lay hands on these people and even after we dismiss this service, we're going to continue laying hands on people. You can come up now even later if there are strange things, reoccurring cycles in your family. And in fact, before we pray, I want to say this. The reason Jesus was sleeping when the storm came is because Jesus entrusted them to take care of the storm. And I want to declare over someone in this place that Jesus is entrusting you in your family to be the curse breaker. You are going to break the curse in your family in Jesus' name. You are the curse breaker. We worship you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Come on, lift up your hands. Come on, the anointing of Jesus is already in this place. The anointing of Jesus is already in this place. Lift it up. Everything. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
those of you in the front here and even up there I want you to say I declare that I belong to God come on shout it out I declare that I belong to God I declare that I belong to God I declare that I overcome Satan because greater is he that lives in me than he that's in the world. Come on, I declare that I overcome Satan because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Declare, the Lord has granted me long life and he will preserve me. I dwell in the secret place of the Most High and I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I declare that I have the shield of faith in Jesus' name. And I declare that no weapon formed against me, my marriage, my family, my children, my business, my career shall prosper in the name of Jesus. And I declare that I am free from the bondage of the evil one in Jesus' name. It's done, it's done, it's done in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout up at the Lord in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, it's done, it's done, it's done, it's done. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Say, I declare every contract every release that was given to the enemy every contract release every agreement that was made with the enemy is now broken devil you have no place in my life my family my children I speak to this storm and I rebuke you in the name of Jesus I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You have no place in my life, my children, my family, my marriage. I declare that I am free today in the name of Jesus. For the storms and the winds still obey Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. instruct you to get some friends and family and neighbors that you pray with parents build a prayer circle for your children build a prayer circle for your family and your children and don't let the enemy drag you out of that circle with worry and fear you grab that devil instead of complaining you grab him and drag him into your prayer circle and begin to rebuke the works of the evil one and it's so easy you know why it's so easy it's so easy it's so easy you know why it's so easy because the storms and the winds they obey him That storm you're going through, that wind you're going through, it has no chance in the presence of the man Jesus. But you know what's amazing? (laughs) Is that he can go to sleep because we're now in charge. We're now in charge. We're now in charge. That curse is broken over your family in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus that we destroy every lie of the enemy and we believe the truth Jesus the truth Jesus the way in Jesus name I don't know about you but I feel breakthrough in this house I feel breakthrough in this house oh come on somebody shout and celebrate your breakthrough I feel breakthrough in this house and the winds, they obey him. The storms and the winds, they obey him. 
every demonic covenant and contract is broken. Why? Because you have power to do that. And the storms and the wind, they obey him. We break every contract that we've walked in in fear. I rebuke high blood pressure, not part of your family. I rebuke sugar diabetes, not part of your family. I take dominion authority over poverty, not part of your family. I curse anxiety, depression, phobias in Jesus' name. Panic attacks, no more in Jesus' name. You're going over to the other side in Jesus' name. Come on, I rebuke every strange occurrence, strange behaviors in your home, tendencies, promiscuity, adultery, all types of strange spirits, not your home in Jesus' name. Come on, drag that thing into your prayer circle and take dominion authority over the works of the evil. In Jesus' name, every eye closed, you cannot leave a room like this without saying yes to Jesus. I'm going to count one, two, three. And if you're in this place, you don't have a relationship with Jesus, let me tell you that not having a relationship with Jesus is just exposing yourself and opening yourself. Because the winds only listen to him. They obey him. I'm going to shout one, two, three. If that's you, you need a relationship with Jesus. You don't have a relationship with Jesus. Maybe you need to recommit your life to the Lord. As soon as I shout three, I want you to throw your hand and say, Pastor, I need to give my life to Jesus. I have to follow him. I want to get out of the driver's seat of my life, and I want Jesus to be the leader of my life. This is why we do what we do. I'm going to count one, two, three. If that's you, just stretch your hand and say, Pastor, I have to give my life to Jesus today. Here we go. One, two, three. Hands, hands, hands. Thank you. Thank you. Keep that hand up. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just keep that hand up because an usher is going to find you and give you a Bible and give you some material. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to count again. If you're in this place, I'll wait for you. I'm going to count again. If you're here and you need to give your life to Jesus, you don't have a relationship with Jesus, as soon as I shout three, I want you to throw your hand and say, I have to give my life to Jesus. Here we go. One, two, three. Hands, hands in the air. Hands in the air. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to give my life to Jesus. Those of you who lifted up your hands in church, we're going to pray together. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I give you my life. I surrender all to you. I confess with my mouth. And I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ, you're the Lord and the Savior of my life. Impact just one more time. Can we celebrate the Lord like we know how in this place? Hey! Hallelujah. Woo! The Spirit is in the room. There's breakthrough. Freedom and victory, y'all. Those of you who said yes to Jesus today, or maybe you recommitted your life, you prayed that prayer and you said, this is my line in the sand. We wanna help you take your next step because it doesn't stop here. There's more, there is more for you. You are made new today. So if you, if you did say that prayer, I want you to take the blue card that the usher handed to you and fill that out. And we have a team, we are here to help journey with you. You do not have to go through this alone. And we wanna help you take your steps to baptism. Baptism's part of our salvation. Jesus said, repent and be baptized. And to declare to the world that I made this decision, I'm with him, I am a new creation. So maybe you haven't gotten baptized yet and it's your time before you leave today, fill out a card, get it to one of our ushers and we wanna help you take that step, amen? Amen. Hey, we have the prayer team down front today. If you need prayer still and you would like to just get some work, come down here. Um, they're going to stay a little bit longer and pray for you all after service if that's something that you need. Amen. Amen. Hey, if you are new, if, if you're a first time guest today or you're visiting us, we want to connect with you. So we have something for you happening right now. Right outside of these doors, we have a guest lounge, and we'd love to meet you, shake your hand. We got some goodies out there. Grab a buddy, get, head out to the guest lounge, and we'll see you there. For the rest of you, we love you. We'll see you next Sunday. Have a great week, Impact.